Hi everybody, it is September 18, 2019. I want to go over some information that will show you where we are headed and we have been put on, well, a very speedy train heading towards our complete and utter demise. I cannot believe what we are living. And then I'm going to go through some information showing that uh, who who's leading us there? Well, a 16-year-old and a psychopathic narcissist. Then I'm going to get to Texas, what's happening in Texas, and read some forecasts that really should beg questions in adult minds like, hey, how is it that they can't even forecast weather when the weather is over them happening currently. All right, extreme weather displaced 7 million people in first half of 2019. This Yale environment 360, it comes out of the Internal Displacement Monitoring Center. Yes, they are now estimating that the number could hit 22 million by the end of 2019, which would be among the highest ever recorded in today's climate in today's changing climate, mass displacement, climate change, refugees, well, uh, it's triggered by these extreme weather events which are becoming the norm. Do they ever discuss weather modification, geoengineering, what militaries around the world are doing? No, no. This is climate change. Everything is climate change. Why? Because we must support national governments in their efforts to invest in sustainable development and climate change adaptation. Only then will we be able to reduce the upheaval, trauma, and impoverishment that many millions of people suffer each year. Okay. It is truly sickening to see the lie carry the day. And when you see our mainstream media asking Americans to confess their climate change sins, are you not repulsed by this? You know, look, in reading some of the sins, I fly to see my son on the West Coast, I live on the East. I drive to work even though the bus is almost as fast. I often feel I have good excuses. I wish I had been born vegan, and then maybe it would maybe it would be easier. I can't seem to give up meat. Yeah, okay. Um, this it would be laughable if it weren't so dangerous. And now that it has accelerated so fast. The promotion of climate change has become even louder in 2019. The IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel, continues, it continues to be regarded as, well, the consensus, 97% of scientists around the world agree that man, the CO2, is causing climate change, when it's a bold-faced lie, and we can't get ordinary people to even check out the lie, okay, then that means that, and based on what I've been seeing, they have accelerated their pace to bring about that sustainable development and how are they going to do it with well extreme weather events that is weather being used as a weapon <clears throat> you won't see mainstream media ever covering what the military is doing in regards to the technology that the world, militaries around the world are using to cause these weather events no 
I don't do anything for the environment. I don't care, reads another entry. I am eating bacon with breakfast this morning, and I'll have it again tomorrow. Another declared. I love plastic straws, straws, and I cannot lie. As many as I can get before I die. Such straight soda with apple pie. Yes, sir, I'm the guy. Okay. Um, so others appear to have taken the opportunity to troll. I require at least half a roll of TP when wiping toilet paper. Um, are they trolling or are these people actually reflecting the idiocy of NBC asking Americans to confess their climate change sins. I think they're reflecting the idiocy of this. But that all of this is based on a lie, that really, that really gets me. And so does this guy. Okay, here we go. It's very good to see you again. Very good to see you. Thank you so much for stopping by to say hello. Thank you for having me. Of course. Well, you're changing the world, so we're very excited to have you. How have you found so far uh, the Friday strikes? Uh, how did they go in New York and how did they go in Washington? Very well. Yeah. Um, they, everyone is so nice and all these young people seem so, so eager, mm -hmm. very enthusiastic, which is a very good thing. Yeah. Yeah. You and me were a team, huh? Yes. We Do you know about fist bumping? Do you, do you believe in fist bumping? Yes. <laughs> You can do the, do the boom. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck, you too. Okay. Um, is she a duped 16-year-old? I had subscribers leave comments who have checked out who this Greta Thunberg is, and she has pretty shady family members. Um, and I, I, I don't want to speak to it because I can't remember it, but... I don't want to say anything about this Greta, 16-year-old, because she might just be exploited by these psychopaths like Obama. Now, oh my God, well, I do recall my daring to say something about Obama that wasn't positive to my liberal progressive Democrats who could give two shits about the truth. They were just, yay, yay, my team, my leader, and that's all they cared about. Uh, okay. Well, let me just say about Obama. You know, let's just talk about that Nobel Peace Prize. Now, Greta. Uh, oh... Don't quote me on this, but was her grandfather Mr. Nobel? Oh, my subscribers who looked into her, please correct me in the comments section. But there is a connection with Greta and the Nobel, Alfred Nobel, who was really a seller of, um, wasn't he, uh, didn't he in, in, um, invent dynamite? and then sold arms, <laughs> Nobel Peace Prize. Okay, Nobel Secretary regrets Obama Peace Prize. And, well, he should. Nobel laureates were asking the Nobel Commission to revoke his award and get Obama to pay back what the Nobel Prize, uh, the monetary prize, have him pay it back. And the Cato Institute also called for revoke, uh, revocation of that Peace Prize. Let me just read a little bit of, you know, it's so amazing. These psychopathic nut jobs are charming. And they seem to be so swell and well. They operate as if they're just above, well, the ordinary lowlife, you know, the 
just the ordinary citizen. But, yeah, Obama. You can't get people to open their mind to even consider that this guy is a psychopath, a narcissist, and all he cares about is, ooh, ah, I can make a lot of money. And, ooh, wow, now I am a billionaire. Ooh, wow, and I'm buying a $15 million estate on Mothard's Vineyard. And, yeah, why am I putting $15 million into an estate when I believe in climate change and, oh, the sea, it's rising, it's rising, and the ice caps are melting and melting, and, oh, we're all going to drown, and you buy an estate right smack where you claim that just in a couple of years, it's going to be gone. Great investment, Obama. Great investment. So, let's just talk about that Peace Prize. Something was very wrong with the Nobel Commission giving it to someone who didn't deserve it, had done nothing for it. But hey, let's let's give it what 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 did this um, here the criticisms um, here he says the Nobel Peace Prize to U.S. President Barack Obama in 2009 failed to achieve what the committee hoped it would. They hoped that it would, well, make Obama stronger. You know, all the bullshit that he was campaigning on. It would make Obama stronger. And he would be, yeah, like Jesus walking on water. What actually happened? Nobody wants to know the truth. You guys do, but um, Obama now has the distinction of being continuously at war longer than any other American president in U.S. history. The New York Times noted the irony that the longest serving wartime president was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize only nine months into his first term in office, yet the article characterized Obama as a reluctant warrior laboring under a heavy burden inherited from his predecessor. The article also focused on Obama's efforts to transform the nature of how the United States wages war, relying more on drone strikes and targeted special forces operation, operations than traditional intervention with ground forces. But in doing so, the Times told only half the story. The United Nations Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Killings uh, which was four years later, so it was uh, approximately 2013, came out with a report, a uh, summary on arbitrary executions, and the rapporteur told a conference in Geneva that President Obama's drone strike program threatens 50 years of international law by encouraging other states to violate long-standing human rights standards. Obama's drone strike program has institutionalized the practice of extrajudicial killings in violation of international law, as documented by Jeremy Scahill in his book, The Assassination Complex, Inside the Government's Secret Drone Warfare Program. Um, Obama has codified assassination as a central official component of American foreign policy. Obama, his drone strikes, wow, he outdid Bush. And guess what? Trump comes in, his drone strikes, he outdid Obama. This is a global assassination program that is authorized and run under what amounts to a parallel legal system where the president and his advisors serve as the judge, jury, and executioner of people across the, the globe. Uh, revelations in the assassination complex involves the disclosure of secret government documents on Operation Haymaker, a drone strike program operating in northeastern Afghanistan. According to the government's own documents, nearly 90% of the people killed in U.S. airstrikes during one five-month period were not the intended targets. 
The New York Times also reported that President Obama has taken military action in a total of seven countries, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya, Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen, without the authorization of Congress. If you include covert military actions taken by special operation forces, the list is longer and the impact much broader. Nick Terse, a writer for The Nation magazine, uh, stated in an article during the fiscal year that ended September 30, 2014, U.S. Special Operation Forces deployed in 130, deployed to 133 countries, roughly 70% of the nations on the planet, according to Army Lieutenant Colonel Robert Bockholt, uh, a public affairs officer with U.S. Special Operations Command, SOCOM, the country's most elite forces were active in more than 150 different countries around the world, conducting missions ranging from kill, capture, night raids, to training exercises. In 2015, Terse reported that in 2014, the United States carried out 674 military activities across Africa, nearly two missions per day, an almost 300% jump in the number of annual operations, exercises, and military-to-military -military training exercises since U.S. Africa Command, AFRICOM, was established in 2008. Awarding a Nobel Peace Prize on the basis of expectations was unprecedented. The Nobel Commission did it, but after eight years of continuous warfare, and I will include the killing of innocent people, the Nobel Committee should take another unprecedented action. It should revoke Obama's peace prize and demand repayment of the prize money. And Nobel laureates themselves were calling for just that. Do you think we have a problem with our mainstream media? They continually lie and they continually promote those who are, well, pushing the agenda for the United Nations and to reshape the world under a new world order for the elite. And this woman, well, this young woman, 16 years old, she sits in front of Congress today and testifies? Really? Why is she propped up? Why is she front stage, front and center? Greta, Greta Thunberg meets with Obama, meets with our, well, representatives in Congress. Um, why? Because it's pushing the agenda. It's pushing an agenda that is based on a lie. And listening to this, I have to tell you, I am getting so thoroughly disgusted that I don't know how much longer I can do this. It's so repulsive to have to face this every single day. But listen to the arrogance of this 16-year-old. My name is Greta Thunberg. I have not come to offer any prepared remarks at this hearing. I am instead attaching my testimony. It is the IPCC Special Report on Global Warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius, the SR 1.5, which was released on October 8, 2018. I am submitting this report as my testimony because I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to the scientists. Mm. And I want you to put, unite behind the science. Okay. Um, could it be that she's just duped? Or is she just a young player? An actor? It seems that she is. It's unfortunate. And it's really unfortunate now. What, what, 
well, I'll speak for the United States, I am an American. It is really unfortunate what has happened to the adult population. Americans, something is wrong with the majority of them. Now, every adult parent, an adult parent, not an adult child parent, would be countering all of these lies. A mature, healthy parent would be countering the lies that their children are hearing from mainstream media, their government officials, and, yeah, their teachers. But we don't have very many mature adult parents. Their parents, these children's parents, are not doing that. Well, so, all right, the IPCC, the science. I want you to listen to the science, the scientists, and this guy, this guy was the, oh, 97% of scientists around the world. Abject lie. And any adult who is healthy and mature would not call you names. They would look into what you're saying. They would look into what you're saying about this climate change lie. They wouldn't just call you a climate change denier and, I don't know, want you jailed. Um, we don't have healthy people. We, we have a remarkably low number of adults who are mature enough to look into what we are hearing from our government officials and mainstream media. But at this point, you know why it's so sick, sickening to me? Because it also reflects how immoral, I don't want to say dumbed down, immoral are most of our fellow Americans, that this has carried the day. That reflects our very sick population. It reflects a sickness in the ordinary Americans. Now, this one is working for her own demise, or she's just going to be ah, given that very comfortable life that Obama now is living. Um, the IPCC has been trashed by real scientists. And let me just do this. I, you know, it's, I can't believe that I'm, I'm still, <laughs> well, as I said, I don't know how much longer I can continue because this is getting hard. There is no consensus. There has never been a consensus. Hyped media consensus on man-made global warming consisted of 52 scientists. 52. 52. 52. 52. How about 31,487 scientists signed their name to a petition that states that no, we disagree with what the IPCC is saying. How about more than 1,000 uh, 1, international scientists dissent over man-made global warming claims? Scientists continue to debunk fading consensus in 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And we still can't get through to people. We are still, unfortunately, really, we are. The acceleration, it might have to do with people just not believing this climate change, global warming bullshit. 
it might be that they have accelerated the pace um, to get the job done for the United Nations. But I want to also read you a few co quotes. Uh, billions of dollars of grant money are flowing into the pockets of those on the man-made global warming bandwagon. No global warming, the money dries up. This is big money. Make no mistake about it. Always follow the money trail. And it tells a story. James Spann, certified meteorologist uh, here. Um, excuse me, let me bring it down just a little so you can see it. Consensus in science is an oxymoron from Galileo to Einstein. One scientist with proof is more convincing than thousands of other scientists who believe something to be true. And I don't even grant there is a consensus among scientists. It's just that the press only promotes the global warming alarmists and ignores or minimizes those of us who are skeptical. Mark Campbell, professor of chemistry at the U.S. Naval Academy. Uh, how about carbon dioxide is not the boogeyman, the carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere is currently at 380 parts per million. If it went up to 560 parts per million, the temperature would only rise about 0 0.03 degrees. Ian McQueen, chemical engineer. The global warming scare mongering has its justifications in the fact that it is something that generates funds. Edward Tony, paleontologist, palin, sorry. Um, Global warmers predict that global warming is coming and our emissions are to blame. They do that to keep us worried and about our role in the whole thing. If we aren't worried and guilty, we might not pay their salaries. It's that simple. Gary Nullis, Nobel Prize winner for chemistry. How about another Nobel Prize winner for physics? I'm a skeptic. Global warming has become a new religion. It's pseudoscience. And I could go on and on reading uh, so many, you know, William Har um, Happer, Princeton University physicist, former director of energy research at the Department of Energy. I had the privilege of being fired by Al Gore since I don't go along with his alarmism. I have spent a long research career studying physics that is closely related to the greenhouse effect Fears about man-made global warming are unwarranted and are not based on good science. What I do with the IPCC report is put it in the trash can because that's all it's worth. Dennis Hollers, astrophysicist. So, you know, and the IPCC has been so... Articles, articles, articles galore climate change this is the worst scientific scandal of our generation um on the gargantuan lie of climate change science un panels glacier glacier warning is criticized as exaggerated uh, open letter to ipcc on geoengineering yeah that panel has approved the geoengineering that has been ongoing. You know, look at the quotes. Did you look at the pictures? Did you look at the sky? You know, so you have the obvious smack in everybody's face every single day. And they just don't want to acknowledge that something is wrong. My liberal progressive Democrat former friends in Great Barrington, uh, no, you're just crazy. Really? Um, you know, nothing's wrong here? Nothing's wrong with this guy? You can't get through to people? They don't want the truth? It, what, it's too burdensome? Serum? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, these pictures that I took in Kentucky that I noted, oh wow. Well, it wasn't a picture, it was a video that I then took still shots from an editing program that I had. And I noticed when I watched that video that I took, oh wow, something's flying out of this black cloud, black cloud emitting, outgassing something, wow, falling into, oh, the air that we breathe. And it moved and it went right into this black cloud. 
nanotechnology, clouds speaking to one another. We've got an awful lot going on. The world is no longer what we used to think it was, but you want to live in Disneyland and then just attack people as climate change deniers, and then you want to just lie repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. And then, yeah, you parade out your children. Your children who are either believing the lies or they too are lying for their own agenda. Ooh, I'm going to make a lot of money and I'm going to be like Obama. Yeah, I'm going to be able to make a billion dollars and I'm going to be able to buy a $15 million estate. You know, it does reflect upon all of us. Well, this one is talking about that IPCC report. Yes. Listen to the scientists. Listen to the science that is so corrupted. And, well, what did we get pushed on mainstream media? That IPCC report, that catastrophic report, we've got to take action within 12 years. And that report, like all the reports before them, trashed. Climate bombshell, global warming scare is based on careless and amateur data. Uh, so, an audit of the world's most important temperature data set has found it to be so riddled with errors that it is effectively useless. The primary data set that the IPCC used to make their dramatic claims about man-made global warming to justify its demands for trillions of dollars to be spent on combating climate change far too sloppy to be taken seriously even by climate scientists. It's very careless and amateur about the standard of a first year university student. Some of the errors, large gaps where there is no data and where instead averages were calculated from next to no information. The temperatures over land in the southern hemisphere were estimated from just one site in Indonesia almost no quality control with misspelled country names, sloppy, obviously inaccurate entries, artificially cool early, earlier temperatures and warm later ones, giving an exaggerated impression of the rate of global warming, mythology so inconsistent that measurements didn't even have a reliable policy on variables like daylight savings time, sea measurements supposedly from ships, but mistakenly logged up to 50 miles inland. It seems like neither organization, the Hadley Center, the UK Met Office, Office's uh, Hadley Center, and the Climatic Research Unit, yes, East Anglia, that university, it seems like neither organization properly checked the land or sea temperature data before using it in their data set. McLean's report, McLean's report could scarcely have come at a more embarrassing time for the IPCC. On Monday, it will release its 2018 summary for policymakers, claiming that the global warming crisis is more than urgent, is more urgent than ever. However, uh, his audit strongly suggests that the IPCC's reports, the data simply cannot be trusted, but it's hard to discount this person who did the audit since it was he, McLean, that the Hadley Center and Met Office 
in March 2016, he had advised them of certain errors, which they promptly corrected. The Hadley Center and the Met Office used McLean as an advisor. And he pointing out the errors, the Hadley Center and Met Office corrected those errors. So you can't dismiss McLean's authority. You know, there is another panel of scientists, the NIPCC, Non-Governmental International Panel on Climate Change. After those reports came out of the IPCC, scientists got together and said, wow, we need to do something. So they started the non-governmental international panel, panel on climate change. And they are disputing what the IPCC is saying. Why do they not get any attention? And why does this 16-year-old get all the attention? Mainstream media, oh, Greta, come and speak to Congress. And, ah, uh, yeah, meets with Obama, meets with world leaders, gets awards from Amnesty International, paraded about a 16-year-old. But mainstream media and Congress and, oh, those government leaders like Obama and even Trump, because Trump, yeah, strange that national uh, climate change report well it was essentially saying the same thing as the ipcc reports we've got our national scientists that come out with their own report that's consistent with the ipcc why didn't trump get his own scientists why didn't he get independent scientists trump retained obama's scientists something very strange there. Okay, um, well, they don't get any attention whatsoever because this is all based on a lie and this lie you need to believe. You need to believe and you need to confess your sins. Yeah, so though this is going to be long and I know and I'm going to put up the Texas video separately now, but I'm sorry, I need to get this information out. Uh, I know it's not gonna go anywhere. I know it's not gonna, uh, uh, worthless. It's just completely and utterly, after doing this for eight years, no, yeah, they, we have a very screwed up population in our country and a very screwed up population, the world's population. These adults who just either insist on believing every lie they hear and watching, you know, and listening to this 16 year old who may be just a psychopath herself. Hey, go for it. Why did they put up children? Ah because it's those heartstrings and so many adults go wow she's so smart and look at her 16 man she's really quite something isn't she no no she isn't she is spewing lies and they prop up these children because oh my god you can't say anything against a 16 year old right well i can i can and i say to this greta you better do some research and stop spewing the lies. Because the ramifications of your lies are destroying and will destroy more of life itself. So, Greta, you act like you're a know-it-all. How about doing some research about weather modification, geoengineering, 
and what really the IPCC is all about. Yes, after doing this and after living in such a sick world, you get a little perturbed. This is what the NIPCC is stating. And you can look at the scientists. They're actually legitimate scientists and scholars. The consensus is more on the, we don't agree with the IPCC. A whole lot of those scientists. The non-governmental international panel on climate change was created by a group of scientists concerned about flaws in the organization and procedures of another organization, the intergovernmental panel on, on climate change, IPCC. So it is necessary and appropriate that those flaws be presented here. And yeah, look into uh, their volumes, look into all of their reports that they have come out with that goes against what the IPCC is saying. Though often described by scientists and media as an independent scientific organization, the IPCC is in fact an arm of the United Nations. Dr. Stephen Allen reminded us of the true nature of the United Nations in a recent article for the Capital Research Center. The United Nations is a famously corrupt body in which most votes are controlled by klepto, klepto, um, kleptocracies and outright dictatorships. In fact, the head of the United Nations is a dictator. Look into that man. Most of the member states, as they're called, are rated as either not free or partly free by Freedom House and both Communist China and Putinist Russia have veto power and any settlement of the global warming issue by the United Nations would entail massive transfers of wealth from the citizens of wealthy countries to the politicians and bureaucrats of the poorer countries. Other than that, one supposes the IPCC is entirely trustworthy on the issue. Well, it's not. The IPCC was created by another psychopath, Maurice Strong, in 1988, a billionaire, a self-confessed socialist, as part of the larger campaign to justify giving the United Nations the authority to tax businesses in developed countries and redistribute trillions of dollars a year to developing nations. <sighs> I guess it's hard for people to believe that a small group of evil people could have so much influence and so much power to transform the world. Well, you better start believing it because it's happening and they count on you not believing it so they can get their job done. Strong had previously succeeded in bringing about the creation of the UN Environment Program in 1972 and served as its first executive director. The IPCC is a joint project of that entity and the World Meteorological Organization. And I just posted a video with the head now of the World Meteorological Organization who came out and said, um, we, he essentially said, uh, this climate change science, we, we have to, we have to have, uh, review it. Yeah. The IPCC is also designed to put a, to put political leaders and bureaucrats rather than scientists in control of the research project. It is a membership organization composed of governments not scientists, the governments that created the IPCC, fund it, staff it, select the scientists who get to participate and revise and rewrite the reports after the scientists have concluded their work. Obviously, this is not how a scientific organization 
operates. Okay, you can read about, you can read all of it, but in 1996, Dr. Frederick Seeds, one of the world's most prominent and respected physicists, wrote in the world, Wall Street Journal, in my more than 60 years as a member of the American scientific community, including service as president of both the National Academy of Sciences and the American Physical Society, I have never witnessed a more disturbing corruption of the peer review process than the events that led to this IPCC report. So, Greta, be proud of yourself. Be proud that there you are, wanting the US Congress to listen to the IPCC, a corrupt, fraudulent body of so-called scientists. You know, Here, Eric Abetz compares the conversation to Nazis over stance on climate change denial. Tasmanian senator says Hitler would be so proud after academic website announces it will not tolerate climate change denial. Will not debate you, will not allow on an academic website Anything that disputes the agenda, anything that disputes the narrative, the false narrative coming out of the IPCC. The conversation website, he compared it to Hitler, Stalin, Mao, after it announced a zero tolerance approach to climate change deniers. The academic news and analysis website has said it will remove comments and lock accounts that put forward those views. This is where we are today as well. This is what is going to be accelerated. Push the pedal to the metal because it's coming. You know, Abetz, who said he's a climate change agnostic, said environmental prophets of doom had been getting it wrong for half a century. This ugly, unscientific, totalitarian, arrogant approach taken by the conversation is the exact opposite to the principles of scientific endeavor. <clears throat> and every scientist <clears throat> should be outraged because these few scientists, and a lot of them are not even scientists on the panel, they're destroying science. Because nobody, now scientists, you, you really have to wonder, are you real or are you just a lying sack of shit making money? You know, you, you Google search, climate change deniers should be jailed is what I put in. Climate change deniers are a danger to our security. Washington Post. Is there criminal liability for climate change denial? And I, I filtered this to the past year. Um, Chuck Todd, we're not going to give time to climate change deniers. Chuck Todd, that's exactly what the conversation did. An academic website, NBC, Chuck Todd comes out and says no time for any of those scientists that dispute the IPCC fraudulent scientists. It's happening here. And trust me, it's going to happen soon that we will not be able to speak the truth. 
we will not be able to speak the truth because we will experience the repercussions of going against the liars. They, I'm sorry, they, we, we have way too many of them. We have way too many people who do not care at all what happens to anybody but their own little self. We're the few. We are the minority. And it's, it's really, it's, well, you know, if you're one that gets scared of this kind of stuff, then it's scary. Um, Bill Nye calls us idiots, unloads on climate change deniers. You know, it's, this is Nazi Germany. This is a communist country. They're censoring the information already. They will not permit um, all of the scientists, and we're talking tens and tens of thousands of scientists all over the world who have no, no voice because mainstream media all over the world will not give them that voice. If that's not upsetting to you, then, well, good. I'm, I'm sure you live in a great life, and but what we are facing now is really pretty. You know, this kind of stuff went on and on and on. You know, when I didn't filter it, disempower far right climate change deniers. Don't debate them. Uh, climate change activists want punishment for skeptics. Climate change denial should be a crime. Global warming thought police want skeptics in jail. Well, thanks, Mother Jones. No, we shouldn't arrest climate deniers. Bill Nye, science guy, open to jail time for climate change deniers. Well, it's... Uh, really unfortunate that we don't have more people who care about the truth, who care about what's happening in the world beyond their own little life, and so many who have closed their minds. Climate change is happening. I believe the IPCC, and I will not look at any other facts and evidence that, oh, well, have been, you know, published by other scientists? No, because they're just nut jobs, right? They're just nut jobs. It's, look, you know, I understand that I, there's, there's just no way to get through to people with a closed mind. They think that they're just so intelligent and they're not, they're not. They have decided to flip the switch downward, turn off the light in their brain. It's not operating, their brain is not operating. And when you face that over and over and over again, then you begin to understand why well, let's say in the eight years I've been on YouTube, from 2010, well, oh God, it's going on 19, uh, I mean nine years, uh, 2010, 2019, why everything has gotten worse. Those of you who have a closed mind, you really do need to open it because that closure is operating and it's gonna destroy you and your children, ultimately, in the end. I'll link below to everything. 
I, I just can't believe that we're living what we're living. I cannot believe that the truth will not um, and cannot overpower the lies that they just persist, persist, and persist. 